we saw some canine units out here just on the hill behind me. It's a tall grassy area, so we saw some flashlights, some police with canines trying to survey the area. We were seeing a few accidents. It was a bit hard, I'm going to be honest, for us to even stay on the road. While many people will make fitness their New Year's resolution going into the new year, I'm told that burnout is one of the reasons that lead many to pump the brakes. Kids will not be able to leave the school buildings at this time because he says it interferes with the school's safety plans. Senate Bill 48 is just a two word change to the current state law, but those two words carry weight. And in a text message, Coach Woods told me he would not be attending the meeting tonight, but he did provide this statement. Words that were read to the public in the community center behind me. I spoke with a responding officer just a short time ago, and he told me that there were two cars involved in this crash. And I'm actually going to step out of the shot because they're working on cleaning up the crew right now. The car that you're seeing on the tow truck is a brown car. They say that the driver of that car is deceased. Lexington did handle some of these busier roads, but it was kind of up to homeowners to clear off their own driveways, of course, as well as sidewalks and even in some of these residential areas. While Senator McDaniel says that he feels good about this being the year for this legislation to pass, there is not a consensus in the House of Representatives. While this is all good news, those who were displaced spent much of their Thanksgiving out of their homes and unable to cook their Thanksgiving meals. We're here on her property right now she wasn't found here she was found nearly a mile down the road we're just checking on you we wanted to check on you to see uh, see if you've got water this morning this particular community this trailer park they run into this every winter Deputy Michael Dempsey, alongside other members of the Paris and Bourbon County Sheriff's Offices and the Paris and Bourbon County Fire Departments went door to door just check on them hand delivering cases of water to residents of a trailer home community plagued by frozen pipes. It's frozen? Yeah. Okay, do you need some water? Even after they took steps to prevent it from happening. I've talked to some people in the trailer park that said even though they knew it was coming, they prepared for it, they let their faucets trickle. Deputy Dempsey says the prolonged cold made it more difficult for residents to keep the frozen pipes at bay. It lasted for a little while and the pipe still froze up. Some have been residents of the community for multiple years, such as Robin Lindley. Thank you guys so much. Have a good one. He says he took steps to keep his pipes from freezing, such as insulating the pipes and keeping their trailer warm. But he says the pipes started to freeze up four days ago. It, it happens every year. The water usually freezes up out here. We were just hoping it wasn't going to be for too long. <laughs> Deputy Dempsey says a resident told him that the landlord of the community is looking to upgrade the pipes to prevent future freezes. But with more than 50 trailers, oh, you're, I appreciate it you're very, very welcome. Hi, you take care. It won't be a quick fix. It's ongoing. It's been a problem for a long time, but they are working to to make it better. It's just not going to be a quick fix. In Paris, Jessica Umbro, WKYT. QSL, uh, Bluegrass Amateur Radio Society, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, you're 5 9 into Lexington. David Richardson of the Bluegrass Amateur Radio Society says ham radio is both a worldwide hobby and a worldwide necessity. This is the stuff that's going on in the last 15 minutes on FTA around the world. When I hit go, you'll see. Ham radio can connect people across the globe without internet connection. You know, it, it started back in the old uh, telegram days and they used it's Morse code. People still use it, and it's a very efficient mode. Richardson says ham radios can come in handy for natural disasters, whether it be the main form of communication or as a backup just in case, like in the 2022 Eastern Kentucky floods. They wanted amateur radio operators to travel with their teams in case they had no cell phone coverage. And um, they did have cell phone coverage, so it was a redundancy, but Irregardless, you know, the, the people were there just in case. Richardson and other members of the Bluegrass Amateur Radio Society tested their equipment Saturday at Kentucky Horse Park, a biannual event dedicated to checking their tools. Twice a year we go out and we practice setting up communication stations where one doesn't normally exist. And you learn things. You learn, usually you learn what doesn't work. Richardson says it's a way to connect and to pass the time. But it's a pastime that can quickly become necessary. And he says they stay ready if that time ever comes. We hope we're not needed. To be honest with you, we don't want things to get that bad. But if they need us, we want to at least be somewhat competent. In Lexington, Jessica Umbro, WKYT. 
Hundreds of concerned citizens from Paris and surrounding areas gathered under one roof, calling out elected officials on what they say has been a secret land grab for corporate benefit. To those behind this, if you want to try to stab me, at least be man enough not to stab me in the back. Tensions were high among a crowd who showed up to support Citizens for Bourbon County, a group rallying against a proposed $320 million expansion of the Bluegrass Station. It's part of the budget that has passed in the Kentucky House of Representatives and now is in the Senate. We're kind of uh, getting together now to try to strategize and get answers at a local level. Landowners in the area fear that they will lose their property to eminent domain, which is the government's right to purchase private property for public use. Residents say a similar idea failed in 2017 and 2018. As soon as the uh, the local um, people found out about it, it was uh, it was shut down. Fast forward six, seven years later, um, here we are again. Newer residents share the concern about pollution, noise, and expansive development. I spent 20 years flying in the Marine Corps. I fly for an airline now. We moved here to get away from that kind of stuff, you know, not have it built right down the road from us. A running theme of the night, the fear that some elected officials may have known about this idea and kept it from their voters. If that is the case, it's downright un-American and most certainly un-Kentuckian. Towards the end of the night, Citizens for Bourbon County opened up the event to public questions, and one participant did ask where do they go from here, and there seemed to be support among the crowd to eventually take this fight to the steps of the Capitol. Not only is it a restaurant, it's a time in history. It's probably one of the most historically important buildings left. 9 West Lexington Avenue in Winchester was not always a restaurant. For the first 100 years, it filled many roles, originally a fire station and an office for the mayor. It's just a, a, a great time capsule. But in 1984, Bob Tabor made it a restaurant and downtown hotspot. If people come in, sit down, another couple come in, sit down, they turn the table sideways. Before the night was over, all the way down, lined up, everybody knew everybody. Bob says the engine house was for people of all ages, including kids. They didn't have to sit at the table. They could spin stools, dance. To, we had the hokey pokey and the bunny hop <laughs> on the jukebox. And it was just a great place to see children grow up in. Just one of the kids that frequented was Bob's daughter, Kara. Customers, the employees, throughout the years raised me and raised my son as well. And it's just, it was an amazing place to grow up. Throughout the years, Bob says people of all backgrounds would come through for a bite to eat. They had farmers would come in, not necessarily with clean boots, but when they left, the only problem we had was the odor of diesel fuel. And 40 years later, under new owners, the food keeps coming, the music keeps playing, and the community keeps coming back. In Winchester, Jessica Umbro, WKYT.